Welcome to a new vlog. Today it's kit assembly time. I think I've mentioned this a couple of times uh, before. From time to time I like to uh, assemble these uh, kits I get very cheap from China. And today it, we're going to be assembling, uh, I think this one is an LM317 adjustable power supply kit. And what's different about this kit is uh, it comes with a voltmeter as well. So we get this uh, A4 sheet of instructions, but uh, they're in uh, Chinese of course, so we can't really use this. But um, we see that they did make an effort to make this instruction sheet and it would have been nice to have this in English. They even have a, a color code table for the resistors. They show you how a, a proper solder joint should look like. And these are all drawings that I recognize from uh, electronic uh, books and uh, other articles that I have written over the time. Anyway, we don't need these. Let's get straight to the assembly of this kit. Oh, I didn't expect this. The PCB is a proper FR4 and looks to be decent quality. Uh, you usually get those uh, phenolic type uh, PCBs with these uh, with these uh, cheap LM317 kits. Let's see what are what brand are these uh, capacitors? They are Chang brand. Yeah. These are top quality capacitors from China. I might even uh, replace these. I think I have uh, replacements for uh, 100 microfarads and 1000 microfarads in my uh, capacitor bin. Uh, we get a dual head uh, potentiometer with a plastic knob. We even get a, a small heatsink for the LM317, but I'm quite sure this will only handle maybe one or two watts of power dissipation before it gets uh, too hot and it looks like the voltmeter is one of those uh, modules that you can purchase separately it's a three wire voltmeter uh, these are quite common and very cheap on ebay it looks like we have a bridge rectifier on the input which is made up of um, discrete uh, diodes these are one and uh, for 007s. So I'm going to start with soldering in these diodes. You need to make sure to get the polarity right when assembling these uh, diodes and as you can see the cathode is marked with this uh, stripe on the diode and we also have a marking on the PCB. As you may know I mentioned this a lot. I like using flux when soldering because it makes the job so much easier. So in this case I'm using this uh, Kester flux pen that I got from eBay. I should have applied the flux before inserting the components because uh, that's much easier to get all around the pads. And usually after soldering a couple of components I trim their lids because they just get in your way of um, when continuing to solder the other components. I'm going to continue by soldering these uh, small signal diodes. These are uh, 1N4148 and uh, these also have a marking for um, the uh, cathode and you need to get that right when inserting them on the PCB. I'm not sure what the uh, role of these diodes uh, is. Let me just take a look at the schematic. So it looks like... Uh, I think they are here for uh, transient protection, but I'm not sure, don't quote me on, on that one, but judging by the uh, reverse polarity on the regulator, uh, I think they're there for the um, transient protection. Next up, let's install our uh, resistors. These look to be uh, the same value. Do we have a third resistor? These capacitors, these uh, ceramic capacitors are marked 104 and that's uh, 0 0.1 microfarads. They're both the uh, same value and it's quite easy to 
identify where they go in because uh, we have a labeling of 104 on the PCB. I mentioned this uh, before, I usually use a fume extractor when soldering, but when I record this, uh, these videos for YouTube, I can't use um, my fume extractor because it's quite noisy and uh, it will make the uh, audio on the video quite bad. So it's, it's, I'm trying not to breathe in those fumes, they are quite toxic, but if you're doing this at home, it's highly recommended to use a fume extractor and avoid inhaling any of the fumes generated from uh, the soldering process. Let's also solder our LED in here. I'm guessing this is just a, uh, a power indicator LED. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, matching um, value and voltage capacitors in my uh, capacitor uh, uh, set. So I'm going to use these uh, one hung low Chang brand that were delivered with the kit. Make sure you get the polarity right when soldering these uh, electrolytic capacitors. They have the negative marked with this uh, stripe and it's the shorter lead. And we also get the same stripe on the PCB uh, silk screen. The LM317 they sent with this kit seems to have an ST logo in that lower left corner. But I don't really believe this is a genuine ST part. It's most likely a clone of some sort. And uh, I wouldn't trust this, uh, this chip in anything uh, important to me. Another uh, important thing is that the tab on the LM317 is actually the um, output. It's actually connected to the output terminal of the chip. So when you attach it to uh, the heatsink without any insulation, the heatsink becomes uh, the output of the chip. So it's important to check if the, uh, the tabs for mounting the heatsink are connected to anything else and in this case those pads are isolated from the uh, rest of the the ground field that you see there uh, the isolation is really uh, really thin but i have checked with the multimeter and there is no connection between these tabs so it's safe to uh, mount this lm317 without any insulation to the heatsink and before soldering this guy in i'm going to attach it to the the heatsink first and then uh, check to see if I need to uh, bend its terminals to make it fit on the PCB. So we're going to use the screw they uh, supplied. Now at this point I'm not going to even bother to add any thermal compound between this, uh, this guy and the heatsink because I know this heatsink will be insufficient for any kind of uh, serious load being put on this power supply. So I'm not going to bother. But if you are planning to uh, assemble this and uh, use it uh, regularly, please use a bigger heatsink and add some thermal compound between the uh, chip and the heatsink. Now I am going to install these uh, mounting posts because these are the ones that will hold the voltmeter. they're supposed to go in like this. Next up I'm going to solder the potentiometer. I'm not sure why they use this uh, dual potentiometer. I mean there's no point in doing that. You only have, uh, you only need a single adjustment for the voltage but maybe this is what they could get at the uh, electronics market in that day when they uh, put together this kit. And in there I need to solder the wires from the voltmeter. It looks like the LED needs to be inserted slightly closer to the uh, PCB just to uh, give enough room for the voltmeter to stand on these uh, standoffs. Now the LED won't be visible after we install the voltmeter because it's going straight on under the voltmeter but hey we're going to see the voltmeter anyway. As for the uh, voltmeter pinout 
black wire is ground, red wire is VCC and white wire is the sense line. So make sure you get that right when uh, soldering on the PCB. Okay, so now with the assembly finished, let's put this thing to a test. I have 20 volts, uh, or roughly 20 volts applied to the uh, input of this module. And I have my Fluke 87 connected to the output. Let's see what kind of uh, range we're getting. So I'm at the minimum right now. And it uh, only goes down to 3.6 volts. And the uh, voltmeter is uh, reasonably accurate. Let's check the maximum range. It's just 6.8 volts. This doesn't make much sense. So we can adjust from uh, 6.8 volts down to 3.6 volts. What kind of a range is this one? I mean, I'm, having, uh, I'm putting 20 volts into this uh, kit. So I'm expecting to be uh, adjusting, uh, I don't know, up to 19 volts. And I believe the LM317 should go down to um, 1.2 uh, volts or something like that. But in this case, I can only adjust from 3.6 up to 6.8 volts. That's completely useless. And I don't know how that could have happened. Uh, maybe if the uh, value of the potentiometer is not the the right one maybe that that doesn't allow us to properly adjust the output okay so i figured out what was wrong with the kit and why it wasn't working so i went back to the uh, schematic and uh, i was looking at the uh, schematic and i remember that i uh, got two uh, 10k resistors in the kit and on the pcb there was one 10k uh, resistor and uh, there was another one labeled 241 and at first I thought this is a maybe a mistake with the schematic diagram uh, and they uh, sent the correct part so I soldered both of the 10k resistors on the PCB but if we look closely here this resistor uh, in combination with the potentiometer forms the um, uh, voltage divider for the output voltage that gets back uh, get gets uh, sent back to the feedback pin so if this resistor doesn't have the correct value then the uh, adjustment is limited within a certain range and then i remembered um, and checked the data sheet of the lm317 and indeed they, they recommend the 240 ohm resistor right here on the upper side of this uh, voltage divider so I went back to the PCB. I only had a 220 ohm resistor in uh, in my um, in my lab, but I replaced that 10k with a 220 ohm resistor, and uh, I started uh, getting the uh, full range on this uh, kit. So right now I can go from 1.16 volts up to 16.7 volts, and I'm feeding in 19.7 uh, volts right now. So uh, I, uh, if, even so, I'm only using a limited range of the potentiometer, maybe a quarter of its adjustment range, and the uh, rest of the range remains unused. But that is probably due to the value of the potentiometer. They have a 50k potentiometer, and I think they have both of these. Uh, this this is a dual potentiometer, and I have, I think they have both of the wipers in in parallel. So we're actually getting a, we're actually using a 25k potentiometer right here, while the uh, data sheet of the LM317 suggests using a uh, 5k uh, in combination with the 240 ohm resistor. So that's also probably a reason why we're not using the uh, full adjustment range of this potentiometer, and we're only adjusting in the first quarter. But anyway. I'm glad that I managed to fix it and uh, uh, I'm going to upload this uh, anyway even though it's, it was a bit of a, a failure from, from my side because I didn't notice this uh, resistor was the uh, wrong value supplied in the, in the kit. So make sure if you get one of these uh, always check the uh, values of the components before assembling and if you notice anything strange just correlate those with the uh, datasheet of the device or with the supplied schematic. As always, 
Thank you for watching this video. There will be links in the description for this kit and the tools I used in the assembly. It always helps if you give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time.